Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about uh, various IoT cloud platforms uh, available in the market and also we will be discussing about the exact costing structure of some of the uh, most uh, trending IoT cloud platforms. So that by the end of this session students will be able to assess the costing structure of various IoT cloud platforms. I will I'll be first of all introducing you and then uh, let's uh, directly get into examples and the use cases of all these things. So what I have here is uh, we need to first of all understand what is IoT cloud platform structure. So to understand that let's uh, uh, get the help of the same example that we have discussed in the previous video. As you can see uh, we have some edge devices. As you can see we have some edge devices available. So these edge, uh, edge devices uh, would be anything like uh, a raw sensor, maybe a temperature sensor, humidity sensor which are trying to pump the data onto the cloud either by means of using a gateway or uh, directly those sensors are pushing the data onto the cloud through uh, some internet connectivity. So whenever we have the data available on the cloud which is being uh, pushed onto it with the help of certain IoT based uh, uh, protocols like MQTT and COAP then now uh, what we have is we have the data available in the storage of our cloud. And this storage is uh, the stored data is going to be further pushed onto the applications. So before actually uh, taking the data and then pushing it onto the uh, final or the end user device maybe uh, you are getting uh, uh, some analyzed data or you are getting some average of some uh, some sort of speed calculated for a vehicle or you are able to sense the traffic based on some lacks of uh, uh, data inputs that you are getting through uh, GPS available on your server. Then uh, we need to switch to an example. So what we have here is uh, Amazon Web Service. If you are able to see the URL, uh, it says aws.amazon.com slash IoT. So this is the first IoT platform uh, that is most trending these days. And similarly we have uh, Microsoft Azure's IoT Hub. So I hope you are able to see the uh, highlighted part in the URL. So this is Microsoft service and similarly we have Amazon Web Services based IoT. So let's discuss a little bit more detail about what kind of services this AWS IoT is providing. So to use this particular uh, IoT platform you are first of all supposed to go to aws.amazon.com slash IoT where you would be able to understand uh, what services it is actually providing. So if you simply uh, hover your mouse on this IoT service tab you will be able to identify that it is offering us Amazon free RTOS and also Amazon IoT Green Grass. So as we have seen in the last video that uh, these two things like Amazon Free RTOS and Amazon IoT Green Grass, these two contribute to the things entity of uh, uh, our Amazon Web Services IoT platform. And the rest of the services like IoT Core, Device Management, Defender, Graph Analytics and all these uh, things are actually a part of our Sense and Act kind of entity of our Amazon AWS. So let me give you a small example like for example I have a temperature sensor connected in uh, this particular uh, uh, surroundings. It is sensing the temperature and I want to simply uh, duplicate the sensors. For example I am now having 1 lakh sensors connected at various positions of my city. And I want to simply identify at what points of the time uh, the sensor is going to uh, reach a threshold of maybe 40 degrees centigrade. Then probably I am going to uh, connect certain microcontrollers to my sensor uh, which will be taking the data from the sensor and then it is going to pump the data onto the internet. So exactly internet in the sense I am going to pump my whole data to my account, uh, my AWS account, uh, a specifically IoT uh, based service and now I want all those 1 lakh sensors data to be analyzed. So now it can't be done on a local server, probably if I have my own uh, local computer at my place then probably I'm going to sense all the data through any software and I'm going to plot all those things in Excel and then maybe I'm, uh, I'm doing some mathematical operations uh, and then I'll be going for ident identification of the average and then uh, I'll be plotting it by using some graphical tools. What if I already have such kind of uh, insights and analytics service being provided by my cloud server? So that's what we all, uh, I mean that's what we already have here. So if you look at the last third service under this IoT services category of AWS, you will find that you have AWS IoT Analytics. 
So if you go ahead and click on that, you will find uh, a little bit more details regarding these things. Like uh, it not only manages uh, the services, but also it is going to be running some sort of uh, smoothing things. Like maybe it could be a data regarding temperature, motion or sound. It could be anything. So along with this, what uh, we have to understand whenever you are using the cloud is that we need to understand the pricing structure of this one. So for pricing structure, you can go ahead and click on price. So it will take you to the costing structure. So the benefit of using online services like either this uh, AWS IoT Core or uh, using the Microsoft operating system uh, based IoT Hub is that you can directly go to the pricing tab. So it's a common technology like whichever cloud platform you are actually uh, using, you will always find this tab called pricing. So if you simply click, click on it, probably uh, nowadays Amazon is giving you a 12 month free trial, but uh, for Microsoft IoT Hub, I'm not aware exactly, but uh, you might be having uh, some sort of free account. Okay, so you, you can even sign for a free account as of the site is actually showing me now. So this is the costing structure. Whenever you are about to choose a particular IoT platform for your own application, you are supposed to understand the services that it is providing, like what uh, we are able to see under this category of AWS. Similarly, now let me show you the costing structure of Microsoft uh, Azure based uh, IoT Hub. So what it says is that if you are uh, purchasing an app service or you are activating a Microsoft app based service, which you want to integrate into your IoT solution, then probably you will be charged 0.86 per hour. And it is going to remain free for the first 12 months. It's a good news. Okay. So now uh, what you have is you can either integrate a virtual machine or you can integrate some database servers like Azure SQL. So you need to take care of this particular pricing and how much amount of data is being given to you people. So if you are sure that you are going to implement an application uh, which is going to uh, work with some sort of uh, REST based object storages or for unstructured data, it's nothing but a simple raw image. For example, you have an image and you are trying to store it in the form of binary and this is the task of your website which you want to uh, host on your own IoT based IoT uh, hub given by Microsoft Azure. Then uh, I will be integrating I will be actually uh, going ahead and creating an account and then I'll be simply uh, uh, activating this blob storage service. And what will be I charged for? I'll be charged nothing for the first 5 GB. So if I'm sure enough that all my indications, whatever, I mean, whatever operations that I'm following on my website uh, are going to be well within 5 GB uh, for the first 12 months, then probably I need not to pay anything. So definitely you can go ahead uh, and uh, work with any uh, a cloud platform and then activate any surface, get hands on with that one. And then you can uh, probably uh, proceed ahead for purchasing that particular thing after the end of this 12 month uh, free tenure. So similarly, let me show you uh, another service which is available and which is more hardware oriented. As you're able to see, I have uh, currently opened a website called thingspeak.com. So in this case, what you have is again, you are supposed to sign up for certain activities and later on, uh, you would be able to analyze your data. So consider a small example like ESP32 or ESP8266 based a small IoT hub in which you are uh, uh, using the things, thing, uh, Thingspeak based APIs for pumping the data onto the free service given by Thingspeak. For example, I am posting temperature of this particular room uh, while I'm recording to the uh, thingspeak.com website, uh, how am I able to actually view the data? So I'm able to view the data either in the form of a graph or I can view the data uh, on the basis of timestamp. So here are some of the actions. I mean, I can uh, set a threshold like whenever the temperature exceeds more than 50 degrees centigrade, turn on the AC. So uh, this is the kind of action I can trigger. So what you need to focus is what is going to be the input through collection what you want to analyze and then what you want to uh, what kind of action you want to trigger once you reach that particular threshold by analyzing it so in between what benefits you are getting by going on to the online based iot cloud platform is that these services like analyzing data analytics machine learning and other services which are trending in uh, these days in the market are provided free of cost or at a very minimal cost 
So depending upon these things, like what services are being provided by the IoT platform, you can easily select the cloud platform which you are interested in. So these are the references used for this session. Thank you.